And what are some of the capital sins, number 69? Generally, the uh, theologians mention seven of them. Pride, avarice, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, and sloth, laziness. When we mention one of them, we are not yet sure whether it has led this person to a mortal sin in this particular case, or to a venial sin, we are not sure. Or to an act which is, we are not even sure whether it is a sin, venial, or imperfection. But it is a root of all those things. And further, it has to be looked into further. But those would be the roots. Now, I guess the best way to overcome them is to practice the virtue that's opposite of them, isn't it? It is. And to, to uh, in short, to practice the opposite virtue, which is to go against right. in the positive sense. So if it's it, pride, to practice humility and... Uh, yes, because the one who is proud is seeking self, honor, ambition, vanity. Mm -hmm. So if that person would accept then humiliations, a lower position, how you behave when you are falsely accused, how you behave when you are given second place instead of first place. Most people think they should get first place, even those who shouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that would be one of the ways. Lust refers to immoderate desire for pleasure in matters touching chastity, which means not proper control of that tendency to pleasure of sex. It can be in a very serious way. It can be in a, a way not gravely sinful, but still sinful. The opposite virtue is chastity, purity, transparency before God, honesty, and seeking of God's will in this matter, and self-control. Maybe we can hit on the sin of avarice. What, what is that? Yeah, avarice is <clears throat> immoderate seeking for wealth, immoderate seeking for material things, especially money and what money can buy. You can see that when that desire, money in itself is not bad, but when a person seeks it, chases it, loses sleep over it, and is ready to do anything for the sake of money, then the person is committing sin. It can be stealing, fraud, injustice, embezzlement, or it can be stinginess, sins of omission, refusing to give. You have tons of money, but another person hasn't, and you refuse to give, or you just give uh, one dollar. Uh -huh. That can also be a sin, omission, to help another when you have just as nations that have, have a certain obligation to share with those that haven't. In the recent encyclical of the Holy Father, to commemorate 100 years of that of Pope Leo XIII, Rerum Novarum, the Holy Father speaks of the destination of material goods of this world for everyone, not only a few people. Yes. Then we, we go on to the, the sin of anger. Yes, it is another of these um, those we call capital sins, yeah. anger. It refers to that loss of temper, the individual losing control of self in terms of uh, an unpleasant situation. It is shown especially when we rage, when we quarrel, when we gossip, when we talk loud, some people shout when they are angry, uh, they even blaspheme. Some people uh, engage in physical beating and pushing and breaking things. All that as a result of anger. Some other people, if they are driving a car, they engage in high speed as a result of anger, and you can guess the consequences. Uh -huh. Then anger makes people say things they regret afterward. One harsh word said to another person can upset that person totally. Yeah. It can break a friendship, yeah. it can damage family relationships. Mm -hmm. Anger in a driver of a car can have very fatal consequences yeah. for that person and for others. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we are weak as creatures. Anger should be controlled.
it does not mean that every feeling of an anger becomes a sin. Ah, no. But we have then to realize, what are we angry for? Is it for a good thing? Is it out of desire for good? Yeah, because Christ was angry when he went into the temple. Yes, but his anger was that of the saints. Yes. He saw the people buying and selling in the temple. He said to them, why do you turn my father's house into a den of thieves? And he took a whip and did operation cleanup. <laughs> and it is interesting that only he, he alone, drove them out of the temple and they all ran helter-skelter. Yes, right. If they must have known they were guilty, he alone, one person, mm -hmm. isn't it fantastic? Yes. And not one of the others had the courage to face him. Mm -hmm. So obviously his anger was, is very different from our types of anger. Each of us can examine himself or herself. Lest we begin saying he was angry and we are angry. Is our anger that type for the glory of God? Not for himself. Mm -hmm. That's a very good explanation because so often they say, well, Christ was angry, so therefore I can be angry. Most of our anger, if not 99% of them, are because of our weaknesses, yeah. our personal weakness, and our difficulty to control our emotions. Mm -hmm. You notice when Christ was slapped by the servant, at his so-called trial, yes. the, Thursday, the Holy Thursday night. Christ said, if I have done, said evil, give witness. But if not, why do you slap me? He didn't get angry. Yes. Christ was in perfect control. Mm -hmm. How many of, of us would have that type of control? Right. That's right. And I think this uh, turns around the whole idea that Christ was out of control and oh, he wasn't no. God and didn't He have, was perfect. Yes, he had control of everything all the way up to perfect. the point of... And the Jews, they knew that. And he gave up his life. He chose to die at the time he chose to die. They provoked him right up to when he was on the cross. They said, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Yes. He knew very well he was Son of God. Mm -hmm. He didn't come down. Mm -hmm. He was not... Uh, if he wanted to show off anger, he could reduce all of them, not to corpses, but to nothing. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't, nobody would even see their cops. That's right. He didn't. He was in perfect control. And we get into the sin of gluttony. Yeah, gluttony is the sin of those who want to eat more and more and to drink more and more. And they don't know when to stop. Or they know when to stop, but they don't stop mm -hmm. because they like the food or the color of the drink is good. Or the, or Television, you can be gluttonous in television, can't we? I mean, just watching it. Over yeah, and over in the, again. In, you can call it gluttony in another way. I guess intemperance, you know. Uh huh, in another way. Even though normally when we say gluttony, we think of food and drink. Mm -hmm. And while it may look uh, innocent enough, or at least silly, it can be rather serious. Yes. You just ask a doctor, and they can tell you the consequences. And not to talk of those who drink too much, get drunk, mm -hmm. and then many other things begin to happen. Uh, they become weaker in front of other temptations, particularly temptations against chastity. Mm -hmm. If they are, and also they get angry easily, and they fight easily. You notice that many people fight in bars when they have taken many drinks. Mm -hmm. They don't generally fight in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Also, when they are drunk, they are not able to drive a car well, and the consequences can be very bad for them and for others, and so on. When they are drunk, they can make fools of themselves and fools of others and regret it ever after. Mm -hmm. And then we go on to uh, envy. Envy is refusing to be happy because another person is doing well. Sadness of mind that another person should be better than ourselves. It is not blameworthy to want to do well, but it is a fault. When we see another person who does well, and we get sad about it, that's bad. That's our fault. We should rejoice and praise God. Otherwise, we can come dangerously near to not loving that person, even to hating that person, to, get, to wanting evil on that person. That's almost like the devil's sin. Therefore, it is not a small matter.
Then finally, we should positively one love others. Mm -hmm. And whenever we see another person doing well, we should rejoice. Yeah. We should praise God. Mm -hmm. We should say, thanks to God. Praise God, all you nations. Here is this wonderful person performing. And we should mean it mm -hmm. and not just say it in the hope that somebody will say we are better. And then finally, sloth. Sloth is laziness in doing one's duty to God or one's duty to others. This type of laziness can make a person leave out going to Mass, leave out our prayers. It can make us neglect our duty, where, especially where it is unpleasant, like parents who have to correct their children, teachers who have to teach the students and tell them this is right, this is wrong, or a priest who has to preach to the people and the one particular virtue is not popular, will he have the courage to preach it or will he now shy away? Uh -huh. That laziness, uh, not, and to develop the gifts God gave us, we should develop them for his glory and the good of our fellow man. That's the positive direction in which we should go. Okay. We should know that we are children of Adam and Eve, that we should keep making effort. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we are carried downstream. So that zeal is, is important. It is very important. Why should we leave the politicians to, to show so much zeal yes. in their political propaganda? Mm -hmm. But in the spread of the good news of Christ, we are lackadaisical. We sit there and the grass grows under our feet. <laughs> That's right.